，今日你今日继续讲到引进几多干粮器皿哦。Today I'm going to continue talking about the vessels that ushered in the coming of Christ. And I would like to talk about the second character, who is Anna. Then we begin to talk about the second character, who is Anna. Then we begin to talk about the second character, who is Anna. Before we start, let us look at the Gospel of Luke, chapter two, verses thirty-six to thirty-eight. Oh, Chinese. Yudu senti mako mako ana si aset si pay hot duelat edidu dudi niki ikeng lau mai cue tongdu tui cue tongdu cutke si jun tang tiang hu tiam liao chit ni zhu gua ki liao hian zai ikeng bui zap si he bing bo di kui xiang dian kim jia ki jiu diu ya su hong xin. 正当那时，伊真正来称写神，将孩子的事对一切盼望亚罗萨丁得救赎的人讲述。OK， 好，那时间暂停读到这了哈。We temporarily end our scripture reading here。我有一负担要讲，就是说讲到引进几多干粮器皿啊。I have this burden to share。The vessels that ushered in the coming of Christ. Last time I've already talked about Simeon. And today I'm going to be talking about Anna. And I'm going to share two main points here. The first is Simeon and Anna. And the second point is the preparation of Anna. Talking about Simeon and Anna. Both of them were vessels that ushered in the coming of Christ. If when the Lord is coming again the second time, God was not satisfied with the condition of His people. To say me sin bo mo chong ni. How come God was not satisfied? Ini ujun jo sin to. Because there were many believers who have fallen into the service wherein it is ritualistic and in the old form. But there is a custom to do it. It is like a habitual and traditional praying. That means that the Lord is going to be the Lord of the Church. It means that they have fallen into the condition of the of the Roman Catholicism. This is during the time. That was the condition of the church during that time. So, in the end, God sent Peter to Hinkia, and he took the gold and the silver. So, for this reason, the Lord had to raise up vessels who will usher in the coming of Christ. This is Simeon and Anna. And this was Simeon and Anna. To make sin, to make sin happy. To satisfy God and to please God. Then, why did the two of Simeon and Anna in the gold and silver have different things? We know that Simeon and Anna they had their own special characteristics. So that this Simeon is a true young man. God in two two days, he put up Kenya. Simeon gave importance to personal knowledge and experience of the Lord. How long can you do the? Then take a look at Matthew chapter four, verse thirty-six to thirty-eight. Just like what is written in Matthew chapter twenty-four. Just like what is written in Matthew chapter twenty-four. Just like what is written in Matthew chapter twenty-four. It talks about the parable of the of wise five wise virgins. And it especially mentions that aside from bringing their lamp, they also prepared oil. This talks about the believers having testimony. He says that those who are in the church are the ones who are the ones who are the ones who are the ones. It means that the wise believer has testimony. What does he say? He says that he has the ones. And they also prepared oil in containers. What does he say? The ones who are the ones who are the ones. It means that the wise believers are filled by the Holy Spirit. It means that the wise believers are filled by the Holy Spirit. And they allow the Holy Spirit to control them. In his life, in his work, and in his ministry, he allows the Holy Spirit to control him. It 
It talks about his relationship and his experiences of the Lord. And this would satisfy the heart of God. This is the experience of Simeon. And on the other hand, we talk about Anna. Anna gave importance to the experience of serving the Lord. And also in it is also mentioned again in Matthew. About a man who traveled to a far country. Oh, and he called his servants to come. And entrusted his affairs to him. To and he gave talents to each according to his own ability. Five talents, two talents, and one. About a person traveling to a far country, it symbolizes that the Lord has ascended into heaven. And he called his own servant. We, this, uh, Christians, the believers, we are the servants. And uh, entrusted uh, to them. His affairs, meaning giving talents or gifts to the believers. Some uh, or would be given the five talents, some with two and some one. And how he served the, the Lord to um, accomplish God's will. The five thousand, the servant gave given the five talents. And two talents. The one who had the five talents. He immediately went to uh, trade, and he earned another five. It symbolizes him using uh, his uh, gifts. And then he earned another five talents. So according to the capability of or capacity of his talent, the ability was able to earn. The same for the two talents. The servant was able to earn another two talents. It also talked about how the servant used his gift. And he was able to earn another two talents. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that God has already given the gifts to all of us. Then take you to the day that we were saved, God has already given His gift to us. We all of us have gifts. But we should be like the uh, servants who gained the five and two talents. They used their talents according to according to some people are good with praying. They have the gift of praying. Or the gift of sharing. Or the gift of preaching the gospel. And those who have the gift of shepherding the saints. And some are very good at uh, the song leading. The moment they song lead, there you could already feel the spirit there. Some are good with uh, playing the piano. Or play other musical instruments. God has given each one of us different gifts. But are we like the servants who have the five and two talents? Are we using our gifts? Thank, thank the Lord, those two servants, they use their talents. And, but the one who received the, the one talent. He buried that one talent in the ground. This symbolizes that he did not use his talent. And he was said or called uh, to be very uh, wicked and lazy. And he called the first two the good and faithful servants. So we when we are given gifts and we do not use them, so he, his one talent was taken away from him and given to the one who had ten talents. What does this mean? 
if we do not make good use of the gift that the Lord has given us, unsu it 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 yung si ikasuhay kita. God will take back that gift. So we should be careful about this. After believing in the Lord, we should serve the Lord and use our gifts. The servant of the Lord the one said this, which really reminded me the biggest punishment that God gives someone is not for you to do what? Is to do It's not for you to encounter bankruptcy or uh, any other kind of misfortune. <laughs> or to, to be saddled with a, a grave illness. <laughs> But it is when he takes back your ministry. God's greatest punishment to a, to a person is to take back his ministry. <laughs> So we should make good use of the gifts that the Lord has given us to be of use by the Lord and to be able to accomplish God's will. This was the experience of Anna. She gave importance to the experience of serving the Lord. And as a conclusion, Not only should we give importance to pursuing the experience of pursuing the Lord, but neglect the experience of serving the Lord. In the special conference, I already mentioned about the pursuit of uh, the Apostle Paul. We must uh, be mindful of things about Then we must be someone who pursues the Lord. But we should not only have the experience of Simeon, to the experience of pursuing the Lord, but we also should have the experience of Anna. Because many people have the experience of Simeon that is pursuing the Lord, but neglect the experience of serving the Lord. They do not give importance to serving. They even belittle or despise the serving. But there are also some people who give importance to the experience of serving the Lord. But neglect the experience of pursuing the Lord. So as a conclusion, it needs to be balanced. We should be balanced. Then in it, then we save the king. Not, oh, not only should we have the experience of Simeon of pursuing the Lord. On the other hand, we should also have the experience of Anna, the experience of serving the Lord. Just like an airplane have, having a pair of wings. Also, a bird having a so pair of wings. Pain. So that it could, you could, it could be balanced. Then we save the king. We should have the experience of Simeon. We should diligently pursue the Lord. Because the uh, servant of the Lord once said, if you do not pursue, then you will not necessarily be spiritual. But if you do not pursue, you will never be spiritual. If you uh, pursue the Lord, um, you may become uh, spiritual. But if you do not accept the lessons that come with it, then you might not become spiritual. But if you do not pursue it, then you will never become spiritual. So we should diligently pursue. But on the other hand, we should not neglect serving the Lord. We uh, preach the gospel, and visit and shepherd the saints, and join church meetings, and oh, lead the church life. This um, is the first point, Simeon and Anna. May the Lord have mercy on us, so, so that we may be uh, balanced Christians. And they are vessels that ushered in the coming of Christ. And they pleased the Lord and satisfied the Lord. And the second, the preparation of Anna. There are four, five small points. I will go through them one by one. 
First is lived wholly for the Lord. And in verse 36 mentioned earlier, there was a prophetess Anna. And had lived with the husband for seven years, then she became a widow and lived on her own. She was a widow. Being a widow means the, the attitude of a Christian towards the world. Because the Lord has already ascended into heaven. So towards the world, we feel hopeless. It is the attitude of death. Anna did not um, seek uh, enjoyment or pleasure from this world. She only wanted to please the Lord. So what does being a widow mean? It means to be holy for the Lord. To live for the Lord. Living for the Lord. Until we meet with him in the air one day. Just like what Paul said. Because of the constraint of his great love. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it tells us. It is the love of Jesus that constrains us. Because one man had died for all. And all have died. He has died for all men. So that those who live do not live for themselves anymore. But live for the Lord who died and lived for them. Because of the constraining of God's love, it's like a big, uh, the great gushing water. So that we would not want to live for ourselves anymore, but to live for the Lord. To live for the Lord that your whole life. So so our what is our goal? It is to live for the Lord. As, as students, we study for the Lord. As businessmen, we earn money for the Lord. We should be careful that we do not earn money just for our own pleasure. I uh, do business, I earn money so that I could be a steward for the Lord. To be concerned for the testimony of the Lord. To love the Lord and love the church. Some are housewives. They have to take care of all the household affairs. A lot of people are now in their houses. But during the first two years of the pandemic, most of us are stuck at home. And these housewives, they also manage their uh, household affairs for the Lord. Here I'm going to share a testimony. As I was preparing my message, he really lived holy for the Lord. I wanted to be accurate about the testimony I'm going to share, so I asked this brother. He said, I thank the Lord. At, during 1977, when he joined the Phoebus uh, Special Conference, at that time, our brother Simon Mix stood up and shared his, as well as uh, shared the testimony. And he shared a verse which really helped him a lot. The world and all its loss will pass away. But he who keeps his word abides forever. 
So he said, I've already, uh, Brother Simon Meek said, I've already served the Lord 50 years. I have never regretted it. If the Lord gives me another 50 years, I will still choose to serve the Lord. And to serve my Lord. And in the end, he sang the song, hymn number 267. I press on. On toward the goal, press on. When we were singing this hymn, all of us really wept. During the time when he was leading us in singing this song, we all wept. And that brother really uh, uh, wept. And a sister even told this brother, I, could, I did not expect to see you cry like that. That time I also the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit constrained me and all, that brother as well, all, as well as all of us there. After coming down from the conference, and there was a great transformation for our brother. The Lord did not call him to full-time service, but he became a very good elder. But for me, God had already placed the seed of a full-time service at that time. And that brother said, Lord, I'm willing to be your steward. I do business and earn money for the Lord. And be a good steward for the Lord. To love the Lord and love the church. And to uh, uphold or the testimony of the Lord. And the Lord had already uh, accomplished his uh, heart's desire. At that time, it started out as a, a meeting in the house. But because the numbers had increased, they could not um, they, they could not be seated or accommodated in the house anymore. So he and the co-workers started to look for a, a place for the assembly hall. Brother Jane said um, for a place to have its own assembly hall, they must have that financial uh, capability. But that brother, that time, he, had, he was doing business and the Lord had blessed him. And he was able to earn a lot of money. And he was earning money for the Lord. The, the Lord moved him to offer a great sum of money to buy an, an assembly hall. And he was a pioneer. He was the first one to uh, offer that uh, the amount of money. Then we could see that the Lord has affirmed this uh, decision. So it was announced that they were going to start to uh, buy a, a an assembly hall. And they were able to buy the assembly hall. This brother is someone who also lived for the Lord. Just like Anna. How he lived holy, holy for the Lord. And I was really touched by this testimony. He was like Anna who lived holy for the Lord. This is the first point. The second. The, she was already 84 years old but did not depart from the temple. She was already 84. Uh, the, uh, Moses, uh, man of God said, our lifetime is 70. And by reason of strength, some live up to 80. Uh, you could say that she could have retired But at 84 years old, she did not depart from the temple. She did not depart from the temple. Because she regarded the church as 
her home. And she lived a church life. And her heart was in the church. And the he, she regarded the church as her home. Just like the Lord Jesus. While she was while he was on earth, her uh, his heart was still also on the church. Two times he went to clean the temple. When Jesus came out to start serving God, he cleaned the temple first. And the second time before he died, he cleansed the temple again. My heart uh, burns uh, like a fire uh, for your for your temple for your house. So Jesus, who took a whip and overturned the ta tables of the money changers. And his heart. And his heart was burning like with fire. And I really feel ashamed. Because we are not like Jesus with our heart so fervent for the church. When there is um, a trading or selling going on in the church, the money changing going on in the church. When the sin and the world has come into the church, what is our attitude? Do we feel uh, nothing about it, or do we uh, are we like Jesus with our heart so fervently burning? Because he also regarded the church as his own. When the Lord Jesus was only twelve years old, he went uh, to the temple in Jerusalem to in, observe the Passover. In the and then afterwards, they have to go back home. But it says that the, the child continued to stay in Jerusalem, so in the temple. His parents already went home. But on the way home, they could not find Jesus. But Jesus was seated among the teachers and listening and asking questions. So um, Mary told him, uh, "Son, we have uh, we are looking for you." You know the heart of the parents. Because the child is lost or missing. He was only twelve years old then. And the parents were very worried, anxious. But how did the Lord answer? Jesus answered them. Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Jesus answered and says, said, Did you not know that I, I must be about my father's business? He was concerned about the testimony of the church and the needs of the church. Brothers and sisters, are we like Anna who regarded the church as her home? As I was preparing, I remembered the testimony of my mother. I'm not trying to exalt a person. But my mom really is like an uh, is like Obed-Edom. Because uh, she valued the testimony of the church more than his her own home. During that time, our uh, San Juan branch has not bought an assembly hall yet. 
And for the prayer meetings, there were like seven to eight families who took turns hosting the prayer meeting. And there were around seven or eight families who took turns hosting the uh, prayer meeting at their house. And on Friday nights, it's at uh, the youth meeting is at the house of a brother Chua. Oh, he is a very good uh, uh, elder oh. there in San Juan. In, 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 in the Every Friday night, the youth meeting was be held, held in his house. house. During that time, uh, the Tuesday prayer meetings, because all the families are also, also busy. For the Tuesday prayer meetings, in the end, the, all the other families became busy and could not uh, inconvenient for them to have the prayer meeting held at their houses. So my mom um, said that the prayer meetings could be held uh, every week at our house. So it became regularly held at our house. Later on, uh, our brother Chua, uh, because he fell, also died. So his son, brother Chua, who is a, a, a deacon at that time, because of the leading of the Lord, they wanted to uh, migrate to Canada. So what happened to the uh, Friday youth meeting? So when we were asking the San Juan brothers and sisters, my, my mom volunteered again and said, I'm willing that the Friday youth meetings be held at our house. The Tuesday prayer meetings was already held at our house. Even the Friday youth meetings was also held at our house. And this happened for more than 10 years. It was really inconvenient because, because sometimes people would come knocking because they wanted to join the meetings already and we would have to go and hide. There were a lot of inconveniences. But my mom was the one who gave more importance to the to the church or to the house of God than to the benefits or losses of our own house. She, she really lived for the Lord and regarded the church as her as her own home. My mom really loved the Lord and loved the church. And she was really concerned for the testimony of the Lord of the church. When there's a need, at that time there were many people who were attacking our, uh, Brother Jeng. Is it Anghui Ping, red guard, uh, red guard? Uh, red he, guard. Saying that he was a red guard. And they wanted to cast out uh, Brother Jeng. But my mom uh, was in one heart with Brother Jeng. And he, she stood firm for the testimony of the Lord. Thank you, thank the Lord. And uh, thank the Lord by the mercy of the Lord that the whole house uh, household uh, serves the Lord. There are three um, pastors or teachers and then also three um, elders. We are but a small family. Because Obed Edom, because of what he has done, uh, God's blessings was upon their family. Because he uh, welcomed the ark of the, ark of the Lord into his house. 
not only the material uh, blessings, but more of the spiritual blessings. We are but a small family. But by the mercy of the Lord, we are, the whole family is able to uh, serve the Lord. Because my mom was like Anna, who regarded the church as her own home. She was concerned with the testimony and needs of the Lord. She loved the Lord and loved the church. So the Lord remembered her. For a vessel that is to usher in the coming of Christ, we should be like Anna who did not or never departed from the temple. She loved the Lord and loved the church. We should be concerned for the testimony of the Lord. Second, the third is that he uh, fasted and prayed. It is prayed out of a burden. When I research Anna, the literal meaning of Anna is to pray. To pray. So he, she prayed and fasted. Fast. Prayer, pray means to pour out oneself. And to pour out all your wants and needs to the Lord. What does fasting mean? To fast means to accept what does it mean to fast and pray? It means to pray with a burden or out of a burden. To uh, raise up uh, vessels that will usher in the coming of Christ. They not only lived holy for the Lord, regarded uh, the church as his own home, but also prayed out of a burden. I remember our sister Jeng. She really was an, an Anna who fasted and prayed. She would uh, regularly uh, fast uh, the lunch. Uh, lunch. She fasted and prayed during lunchtime. But when there's a special need, like a special conference, or the summer conference, or the winter conference, then she would fast for two meals. Fast during the morning and fast during lunch time. And then she would pray uh, diligently for the special conference. This is not easy. Our sister Jeng did this for a long time, um, fasting during uh, breakfast and lunch time. When the church is um, mobilizing the preaching of the gospel, the preaching of the gospel, she also pray, uh, fasted and prayed for the gospel. Our special projects of the church. She would fast and pray for uh, uh, breakfast and lunch. I thank the Lord. Because of that, she had three sons uh, who uh, she has three, three, three sons who served the Lord full time. Our brother David, brother John, and brother Daniel. I thank the Lord. Because our sister Jen was like Anna, she fasted and prayed. It is to pray out of a burden. If we pray without a burden, then, then it's praying perfunctorily. It is just out of obligation. But to uh, fast and pray means to pray with the burden. I'm going to share a testimony. There was a sister. And she really uh, fasted uh, or uh, prayed with the burden. Uh, she lived in Sambonga in Pagadian. Her husband was not a believer. 
not only uh, not an uh, not only an unbeliever but also uh, opposed to her joining the church meetings. When she he sees her uh, reading the Bible or holding the Bible, and he he would uh, set the Bible on fire. You see how hard or how um, hardened she is. And he also smoked. But the Lord gave this burden to our sister to pray for her husband. And she prayed with the burden. Because of her love for her husband. That he would also come to believe in the Lord with her. So she prayed for 13 years. 13 years. It's not easy. Sometimes we pray for half a year or even a month and the Lord did not hear our prayers, then we would just give up. But she prayed for 13 years. And she prayed without uh, becoming uh, disappointed. She prayed without be becoming discouraged. It was with a burden. And in 2006, the husband said that he wasn't feeling well in uh, in his uh, lungs and the throat area. So they went uh, for a checkup at PGH from Sambonga. And found out that he had lung cancer fourth stage already. And he said that his husband was really shocked. And so the younger brother of our sister invited the sister and her husband to come to the church. He said that when he joined the Sunday church meetings, and he heard the message from the servant of the Lord, and the, the younger brother of our sister saw that the husband was weeping. His brother in law. His brother in law. His brother in law was weeping. And he asked him, why are you crying? And he said, it's like God speaking to me. It's like the Lord is speaking to me. And he kept weeping. He was really touched. In the end, he believed in the Lord Jesus and was baptized. So this husband asked, what other church meetings are there here? But the younger brother told him, um, you are already a fourth stage cancer patient. You should not come to church meetings uh, regularly anymore. But then she, he said, I want to join. So he told him about the Tuesday prayer meetings and Thursday Bible study meetings. And so he said, yes, I am going to join them. Not only that, joining, he even stood up and shared his testimony. And he even asked, Is, I heard you are also going out on this stage. But the younger brother said, you should just rest at home. But the cancer patient said, no, I want to join visitations. I thank the Lord. And during visitations, he would also uh, testify for the Lord. And many people were helped by his testimony. A man who had uh, lung cancer, fourth stage, he was still testifying for the Lord. And a lot of people were helped. He even joined the special conference. Just once in Baguio. And after the special conference, uh, coming down, he even stood up and testified. 
医生给讲啊，你判就六年，半年呀，六个月来你时间。The doctor gave him、um, a maximum of six months. 你知影，肺癌的真紧啊！我我知影真侪肺癌的人啊，真真紧就真紧就真紧就离世了。We know that patients who have lung cancer often would、um, pass away very soon or quickly. 就可以就两年。But the Lord gave him more than two years. 一年嘛，你啦，有七个月呀，一年继续继续搞的生活。And during the seven months that he stayed in Manila, he really、uh, lived a church life. And left behind a very good example. And after two years, the Lord uh, uh, took him to be with him, so that he could、uh, rest. And he found rest. We thank the Lord. The Lord have mercy on us. This is for the Lord. This is this is a man. This is a king. This is a king. This is a king. And we could say that this sister、um, fasted and prayed. He prayed out of a burden for her husband. Thank the Lord. And the fourth point. What is the fourth point? 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 What is the Anna left behind a very good、um, an example to us, a vessel that ushered in the coming of Christ. Because she regarded serving the Lord as her main occupation. She gave importance to serving. And regarded serving the Lord as her main occupation. And put、uh, serving the Lord as her first priority. We know that it is mentioned in in Exodus chapter nineteen. And、uh, the Lord told Moses, "And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation." You should tell the people of Israel. What does this mean? That the Lord saved us with a purpose, and that is to serve Him. We got to teach the doctor, teach the doctor, so that we could become a kingdom of peace. This is the thing that the Lord told us. When the Israelites came out of Egypt and crossed the Red Sea, when the Israelites came out of Egypt and crossed the Red Sea, when the Israelites came out of Egypt and crossed the Red Sea, And when they reached the wilderness, there Moses told Moses, "Sin cannot stand in the way of the Lord." There Moses, God told Moses, "Sin cannot stand in the way of the Lord." The purpose of God saving them is for them to become a kingdom of priests. Priests are a group of people who serve the Lord, brothers and sisters. When God saved you and me, He had a purpose. It is not just for us to enter heaven and not go to hell. No, sin. So, did God have a purpose? But there was a purpose in saving us. It is for us to become priests to serve Him. What is the occupation of the priest that is to serve the Lord? That is why the apostle Paul,、uh, Peter in First Peter told us. This is speaking about the chosen. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Here it shows us. This is speaking about the chosen. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We are a kingdom of priests. Brothers and sisters, we thank you. So, then, you know, both of us are all. So after being、uh, saved, then long is the 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 priest. We are all priests. Then long is the priest. Then long is the priest. We are all priests. This is one strong church man. And、um, people who serve the Lord. So it's a matter of being saved. That is why we should not be unemployed. Being saved. We should not be unemployed. This is this 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 The Facebook, the Zoom, Viber, WeChat, all of these. So Hong Zhou. But the Lord had given us this opportunity, even through Viber, Zoom, on uh, uh, WeChat, to be able to serve Him. Then you know, through Him, Bo Yong Sin To, 
参加聚会。We can still preach the gospel, shepherd the saints, and join church meetings. 真正呀，古约的利未人。We know that the Levites in the Old Testament. 伊是无咧耕种诶，耕种。They do not uh, 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 plow or plant. 伊也是无咧种菜。They also do not、uh, save. 伊那是以顺耶和华做咧为业啦。They only have this、uh, occupation of serving the Lord. 真真拢是，真是新约利未人，真拢新约利未人。We are the Levites of the New Testament. 真真真，首先咧职业啊。What is our occupation? 真是咩？是侍奉主啊。That is to serve the Lord. 那你职业是啊？那是这这是是那个利未人。We are the Levites of the New Testament。那是利未人是啊，是双主一班人。And Levites are those who serve the Lord。双主做的是正经。The serving the Lord as our main occupation。为做学生诶。Those who are students。做医生诶。Even the doctors。做生意人诶。And those who are businessmen。工程师。Even the engineers。做先生，做老老师教员诶。As teachers。做护士诶。Or even nurses。我都无职无啥职业。Even though we have different professions, that's a home and school lang. Then what's it, ma? Song to sing and chant. But we have consecrated ourselves to the Lord and serving Him is our main occupation. But a lot of people, it's a pity. They have uh, uh, turned this upside down. And they have、uh, regarded this profession as the main occupation. And serving the Lord as the secondary occupation. When I have time, then I will serve the Lord. If I don't have time, then I'm sorry, I cannot join. Tuesday prayer meetings. 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 Tuesday To be a vessel that ushered in the coming of Christ, like Anna, we should regard serving the Lord as our main occupation. In eternity, there is only one thing that we will do. That is to serve Him. Even the president will stop being president. Our the Philippines has already elected the president. In the in heaven, there is no more president. No more businessmen. No more businessmen. No more businessmen. No more doctors. There are no more sicknesses. No more nurses. No teachers. 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 No I thank the Lord. A time really flies by. And the fifth point. Preach the redemption of Christ, brothers and sisters. Then, what? The third day, 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 the third day. It said that, and coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord. And spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Anna was someone who loved the Lord. And she. Uh, spoke of all that that、uh, the Lord has done for、uh, the redemption. He, she spoke of the redemption of the Lord. A vessel that、uh, that ushers in the coming of Christ must be someone who talks about the redemption of Christ. A person who preaches the gospel. That's why it tells us in Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse fourteen. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the nation. As a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Brothers and sisters, one of the signs of the Lord coming again. The gospel will be preached in all the world. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord be merciful to us. That we would all preach the gospel. 
求救灵魂。And to snatch the, the souls。你主讲，所以主讲，你得往普天下去。He said you must go to the all the earth。他讲好吧，明天。And to preach the gospel to all。哦，信的受罪啊，必定得救。Believe and be baptized, and you will be saved。就是主升天前，哦，复升前会还交代门徒。This was the instruction of the Lord Jesus before He ascended into heaven. Then the gospel will be preached in all the world. As a witness to all the nations, and the end will come. The gospel will be preached to all the world. The Lord has、uh, allowed、uh, placed us in this place uh, to our friends and family around us, even our neighbors. Have we preached the gospel to all these people around us? Just like Anna, who spoke of the redemption of、uh, of Christ, may the Lord have mercy on us. In、uh, conclusion, I would like to share a testimony. Two weeks ago, during、uh, Thursday afternoon, there a brother called me up. He said, "Chaudi, ah, you home been? He said, 'Then it's why call my father. You come, my father got down.'" He said,、uh, "Brother Chua, is it convenient for you to visit my father because my father、uh, fell?" My father got down, got down, got down. And, and also had this、uh, skin disease. Hey, I've been to come and say you, you take. I want to tell you to go you keep. And the Lord told me that I should go. So I go to. So we don't shoot in front now. So brothers and sisters, we should allow the Lord to lead us. Even though we have not, be,、uh, we are not free to go to church meetings yet. But we should allow the Lord to lead us. Even though we have not free to go to church meetings yet. But we should allow the Lord to lead us. Even though we have not free to go to church meetings yet. But we should allow the Lord to lead us. Even though we have not free to go to church meetings yet. But we should allow the Lord to lead us. Even though we have not free to go to church meetings yet. But we should allow the Lord to lead us. Even though we have not free to go to church meetings yet. But we should allow the Lord to lead us. Even though we have not free to go to church meetings yet. But we should allow the Lord to lead us. Even though we have not free to go to church meetings yet. But we should allow the Lord to lead us. Even though we have not free to go to church meetings yet. But we should allow the Lord to lead us. And his father was very pleased. The question in it, in Papa said, "What choice in two shoes?" Because I was the one who led his father to believe in the Lord and be baptized. In Papa said, "Boy, you sin too." It was very difficult for his father to believe in the Lord. In the sinning gangzhou, in the sinning gangzhou, sinning gangzhou. But because of the work of the Holy Spirit, his father uh, uh, believed in the Lord and was baptized. But I haven't visited him for a long time already. Thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity. And then the brother-in-law of this brother was a Taiwanese who did not believe. Oh, he's he was he's from Kaohsiung and did not believe in the Lord. Then Taiwan, oh, Taipei, Lam Lam Po si Kaohsiung ma. We know that in the north we have Taipei and in the south we have Kaohsiung. Chu Kong Yu. And the Lord told me to preach the gospel to his brother. So I preached the gospel to this brother-in-law. I thank the Lord. Because of the leading of the Lord, I grab hold of the opportunity to preach the gospel. So I'll eat the beef. Yeah, come on, chiku chiku. In the end, this brother-in-law also prayed with me. Chiku chiku, they were prayed after me, phrase by phrase, and called on the name of the Lord. And those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So I'm filled with a joy with him. He did good. Listening to the teaching and the leading of the Holy Spirit, I really felt satisfied with him. So I said, "I am going to be a good Christian. I 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 am going to be a good The, Jesus once said, "My food is to、uh, do or to accomplish the the will of Him who sent me." Because it is a enjoyment to serve the Lord. It is enjoying、uh, enjoyment to serve the Lord. And the brother-in-law also believed in the Lord. I thank the Lord. I preached the gospel to this brother-in-law. 
I think the Lord. It's not I who did it, but the Lord. We should be like Anna in the fifth point to preach the redemption of Christ. Whether in season or out of season, we should preach the gospel. While the Lord has not yet come again, we should not go face the Lord empty handed. Must I go and empty handed? There is a hymn that uh, says, Must I go on empty handed? Are we going to meet the Lord empty handed? Lord, I bring many fruits to you. Before you. you. So that you will be satisfied, just like Anna, who also satisfied and gave pleasure to the Lord. May these words that I've shared, these five points. First is to live for the Lord. Second is to regard the church as our home. And to pray out of a burden. Regarding serving the Lord as our main, yeah, uh, main uh, job. While it is still the time, we should do the work of Him who sent us. Because the, time, the uh, darkness will come and we cannot do anything anymore. We should seize the opportunity. And the fifth is to preach the gospel. And to snatch these souls. The gospel is preached in all the, in all the world. Then the end will come. Our time is up. Amen. 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 Amen.